Thank everybody for taking time to join us on today's Valhallen Executive Call. My name is Marty Flanagan. I'm the Vice President of Growth and Franchising here with Valhallen. And uh, I'm joined today by David Graham, our CEO and founder of Valhallen. And um, he, is, he is currently with us on his computer. I have him unmuted so he can jump in and, and, uh, and dive in with us as well today. But so to give you an idea on today's calls and why we do these, we do these calls on a regular basis to be able to provide more insight, more understanding, and also really to allow you to ask as many questions as you want in regards to really breaking down what Valhallen does, which we're going to get into. But as we go through the call today, keep in mind that you will have an opportunity to ask whatever questions you have, and we will go until the questions are, are answered today. So you don't have to worry about being cut off. We'll dive in and answer any questions that we can. But dig a little bit of an update. We've actually grown quite a bit since our last executive call. We've, we've uh, added about uh, 12 more territories that have been awarded. One of them is a current NFL starter, which is exciting to have him on board, which that will hit the news pretty soon. But as our model is what it is, we're going to dive into that today. And David Graham's here with me. He's going to talk about a few other aspects of what we're doing and how we support you as a franchisee. But again, if you're just joining us, the first part of this call is really just breaking down our model. And then you'll be able to dive in with any questions you have regarding, you know, Bahalan or why we do what we do. A little bit of a history. We are the team that built the world's largest coding franchise. So we have a, and that's within the youth enrichment. So we have a lot of experience in that whole world. And really what this, the entire idea and concept of Valhallen was shaped from that experience. We had over 800 territories sold in three countries. That data, that, those insights and those best practices shaped everything that we do at Valhallen. So whatever direction you want to go with your questions, please do because that is backed by data. That is backed by experience. It's not backed by a bunch of thoughts that we had sitting around the table, but actually backed by parent surveys, student surveys, market research, and demographics. So happy to go in any direction that you want, and we have data to back that up. So what is Valhallen? What do we do? And, and uh, why, why are we exploding the way we are? Why is this going in gangbusters right now and getting 300 inquiries last week alone what's been going on well here at Valhallen what we do is we use competitive gaming to create better kids and if you think of the idea of traditional athletics just remove the traditional athletics and insert the world of esports and what we've created is a proprietary curriculum we have coaching guides so we're fully a scalable business and we really use gaming, esports, as a way to create better kids. So if I take you on a little bit of a journey, if I bring my nine-year-old son in and he comes in, he's going to be placed on a team. He's going to have a coach. He's going to come in the same day, the same time, every single week. He has curriculum that's going to focus on him as an individual, how they function as a team, and then also obviously game-specific curriculum. And then he's going to go into a match play in, inside of a league that going against other Valhallen teams from all over the country. So we're all kind of going on the same lane. So he's going to have his skill assessment. He gets placed on a team. He's going to come in with that team, with the same coach, at the same time, every single week. And he's going to be competing every single week. We break down what that curriculum is and what that curriculum does from cognitive skill development to soft skill development. There is an entire breakdown in how we show parents the value because parents are really the customer. So we show the parents the value of having their son or their daughter, their player active inside of Valhallen and really what we bring to the table. So when you think of what that looks like, that's about eight hours a month. But then there's an additional eight hours a month that we encourage all of our franchisees to add to that subscription model, because that's that month-over-month -month subscription model that gives kids another opportunity to make connections, to have open play, to do special events, to create that culture, that fun factor. So that's about 16 hours a month that a parent is going to see. And our price ranges are typically anywhere from 135 to up to 160 in some markets for that 16 hours. So it's quite the value. And that's going to make up about 60% of your revenue. And then we have our camps and our workshops, which make up about, which is, we call our single payment form of revenue. And that's going to make up about another 40% of your revenue. 
And we have financial performance numbers to prove that this works and that this is exciting. An investment to open up of Mulholland is going to range anywhere from probably 1,200 to 1,400 square feet. That'll range anywhere from about 140,000 to 180,000, depending on your market. But that's and depending on what work needs to be done in that space. But we've worked really, really hard to keep that investment low. We've worked really hard to keep that overhead low as well to give you a greater chance of success in your market. Um, now, David, I know you're with me. David, do you have anything you would like to jump in and add there? Well, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I think w the cool thing that you kind of touched on there, and it's kind of my vision for the company, is you know we, we want to make sure that the kids that might not be able to do things in regular traditional sports have a place that makes them feel like they belong. And, and they can, you know, get that teamwork, that communication, those skills that are really only derived when you work together for a common goal. Um, and I think esports, you know, which is just a fancy word for competitive gaming, <clears throat> brings that together in a very unique way. You know, I was sitting at my my son, humble brag here, won the uh, summer season's uh, Apex League for our elite division. His team won last night. And um, we were sitting in the room in the, in, the, in the parents' lobby watching the TV, watching the kids play. And, you know, you could just see all the parents doing the exact same things that we did whenever we were sitting in the T-ball, you know, in the stands watching T-ball, you know. Like talking to the TV like the kids could hear us, you know. Like, like it, it was just, it's just still the same visceral response that you get because you want your kid to do so well and you want to be a part of it. Uh, at the same time and you know to see them win and then see them glow and you know really start the smiles and you could just see the pride in their faces each one of these kids and you know my son's a very gregarious kind of kid he's very outgoing he's not an introvert at all but even for him that was something that he doesn't get a lot of and that was that was a success moment right that's something he's going to be able to look back on and always think hey I did that uh, and I can be proud of that and so He's had soccer, he's played t-ball, he's played basketball, he's played basically every sport you can think of. I've never seen him being like that. Uh, and he still does want to play all the other sports, and that's fine. But uh, I just thought that was a unique kind of gift that we were able to give that team, or all the teams that are, are in playing in the leagues. You know, and, and, you know, by the way, he's also on a Valorant team, which is um, not so great, <laughs> let's just say it that way. I mean... It's the same team members, but they just don't know the maps as well. The tactics are different. And so they're both getting the yin and the yang of this thing right now, and which means they have to learn how to lose with grace, right? And that's something that kids don't learn a lot of these days either. And so I think, I think it's just been a really well-rounded thing for him. And that's just, you know, I, I know that's anecdotal, I mean, for me, but um, I can tell you our personal experience – with my own children has been really great in that regard. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a place where the, you know, the nerdy kids, the dorky kids like me, who grew up without having a place that they felt like was their own, uh, now they have somewhere. You know, you, I know you know this, Marty, but something like 75% of kids stop playing traditional sports after the age of 13. And that's just an unfortunate byproduct of, you know, a lot of things, maybe school level, maybe interest, maybe time that the parent wants to commit to it, lots of different things. Uh, costs are going up, man. You know, to play competitive, you know, baseball is very expensive, or volleyball or any of it, it becomes more and more expensive. Um, and so this is a great way that parents can invest in their kids, give them a way to feel proud of them, and, and share something as a family. Uh, you combine all of that with our Boomer League that are going to be going on at night, where mom and dad can come in and be in their own little league uh, after the kids go to go uh, out of the out of the arena, and I think we've got something the whole family can enjoy and get behind together. And one one part of well, I think one important part to add to this when we talk about being a parent, we actually teach parents how to log on to the Discord, and we teach franchisees how to actually do this as well, where parents can go online, they can actually if they wanted to drop their son or their daughter off and they want to go home. They can actually go to their phone, go on their computer or their phone, and actually log in through the Discord, watch what their, what, their, what their son or their daughter is doing, and send encouragement, just like if they were standing in, just like if they were standing in, the, in, in, in the bleachers cheering on their son or their daughter. We teach, we teach parents how to do this 
from discords with inside discord so they can and the kids can actually see that their parents are logged in they can actually see it and they can see if their parents are going to send them what, whatever they type in there and whatever they're doing so we want it to be an engagement part we understand that the parents are the customers so we have to continue to show the value and again there's so many reasons behind this that is backed by our experience and and our success with what we've where we've come from that it really really builds onto that that parent success that parent participation and how kids stay engaged we know for a fact that kids will continue on with us if they're competing on a regular basis and we know for a fact that parents will stay with us as long as they see that this is benefiting in a positive way to their son or their daughter. And we have a complete breakdown of all the cognitive skill and soft skills that actually are being developed. And it's based off of research that you can go to multiple universities have done deep research into what is happening cognitively inside of esports. And we put focus on that by building a curriculum that focuses in on that. And it really allows kids to stay engaged. When you yeah. think of coaching, David, I want to have you jump in real quick here. When you think of the coaching, one big question we get is, how do I find coaches? How do coaches get trained? What are coaches going to do? And we've, we've actually solved this. Dave, you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so we have a specialized website and portal of videos and content that we built specifically for this purpose. All the franchisees get uh, level one uh, for free, that's the le only level that's required for our, for our coaches in the arenas to, to take and, and just make sure that they understand the basics of what it means to be a coach. It's not about being better than the players. There's plenty of NFL coaches that are not nearly as good as the NFL players. They probably never were. You know, they may have played the game a bit, but, and they know the concepts and they know the structure, but then what does it mean to bring the best out in your players? What does it mean to you know, settle conflict amongst your teammates? What does it mean to engage them in new ways and make them think about a, a problem in a different way? And so we have a lot of that built into our system and our curriculum. And then it also aligns with our other opportunities for engagement. You know, five of our pillars, uh, out of five of our pillars, only one of them is actually getting better at the video game ex itself. You know, and that's mastery. The other four communicate... Uh, forgive me, I sometimes mess up and have a little blonde moment here, but uh, it's uh, communications, teamwork, leadership, and community. I got them. And so the other four are typically, um, you know, what most of the time you're going to be spending learning, and, and, and that's what we always say, you know, is like the video games got them in there, and now we're going to make them good humans. And so um, that's why we focus on those every single lesson. They'll have some type of work in one of those other four um, pillars of, of what we're doing and part of it. And so the coaches themselves need to know about that. They need to know and understand how to engage the kids and keep it fun, man. It, nobody wants to sit around and listen to a lecture. So, like, how do you keep it fun and tell them about teamwork? How do you keep it fun and then do an activity in the arena with their team uh, about communication. And so we have a lot of little one-off activities that take five, 10 minutes sometimes to get, get them engaged, get them thinking about how they can become better players if they just listen to some of these other kind of, which seem like dis, dislocated a little bit to them, right? Like, why do I need to learn how to be a better leader if I'm not even the team lead? But sometimes it, they'll, they'll see it and they'll bring it all together to become better players and be a, on a better team. And so that's, that's really kind of the idea of making sure the coaches, it starts with them. Like everything is about the coach, the experience for the players, the experience in the arenas, discipline in the arenas, you know, everything like that starts with the coaches. And so making sure uh, they understand what their role is and how to affect change in the arena is uh, a big part of what we do here. Well, and so to really think through, like, okay, what are the revenue sources? We talked about the subscription model. We touched on that, which is that that they're on a team, they have a coach, they're coming the same day, the same time. It's about 16 hours a month for that range of 130 to 160. Incredible value for a parent, right? Reducing it to the ridiculous, showing the value of that open play and special events that you do monthly, along with that structured safe play that we have. But then you also have your single payment forms of revenue. And the single payment forms of revenue, the big one is going to be your camps. 
like I said, that makes up about 40% of your revenue if you want to look at it on a you know, rounding up scale. And that, that part of your revenue, you have complete guides to what happens every single day. It's all broken down to the ridiculous for you. And then we have, I want to touch on one that's birthday parties. A lot of times we think birthday parties is, um, is, is like a, as a profit center. And yes, we can think of it that way. But really, how we want to think of birthday parties is celebrating the player, having just an incredible environment that's filled with excitement. We give you all these great ideas on how to build tournaments and have it, you know, themed and great. And then, we, then the third is that we, we get data. We're looking for all the email addresses. Parents have to register. So we're getting their information, that customer acquisition. And then the last is going to be process, right? But that third piece is really important because when you do camps, when you do workshops, whenever there's not school, whether it's a Thursday, Friday, and you could do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it's going to be, you have folks to market to. Yes, you can do Facebook boosting. Yes, we can do digital strategies. Yes, we can do yard signs and all these other things that work but there's nothing like getting that direct email from, your, from that Valhalla to that parent saying you're doing a special event and, and getting that folks to come in, obviously. So when you think of like how we break down our environment, it's always about that fun factor. Coach's number one responsibility is to deliver an exceptional experience. Their number two responsibility is to coach and teach the Valhalla curriculum. We give you all the tools, all the systems, we have all the support, we have project management tools for you to, when you go to open up your location. Our team has done this hundreds of times and we've actually built a project management tool in our system for you to follow so you know exactly what to do, when you need to do it, and why you need to do it. And then on top of that, we have an entire university, an entire learning management system of the Holland University that has that it, 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 there's so much information in there and it's all organized for what you need when you need it. And on top of that, you have obviously a very experienced youth enrichment for, you know, tech focused support team. So yeah, like the tools are, think about all the franchisees that are involved now that are multi brand, multi strat you know, they have years and years of business experience that have you know, and that's one of the most powerful things about being in any franchise is that the franchisees who are learning on the ground, who have done the work in the field, uh, are, are going to be there to support each other. And that was one of the coolest things to see at our other brands as well. And now, now that we have obviously locations in the UK, we have locations opening up in Canada, um, we're, we're, we're projected to be just over 50 awarded territories by the end of September. Uh, that which will be uh, which will be our first year of officially offering the fran uh, us as a franchise. So to think that at the end of that first year, we are going to be at 50 territories awarded. We have about six, seven locations that will be opening in the next 90 days. Then we have another, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, David. I think 25 locations opening up in the next six months. Uh, I think so. It's than that, but yeah, it's it's a lot. It's, there, we got a lot going on, and you know, I think. Um, one of the things that I always tell people, and it sounds like, it sounds a little bit like a pitch, but it's not. It's it's really because we've been there before and we've seen what happens, is that people miss out. If you get that, and it's, they miss out on their territory of choice because we are going to be opening these arenas across the country. People are going to be going in and seeing in person how amazing it is. They're going to see the smiling faces on the kids. They're going to see the happy parents leaving every day, and so. They're going to want to be a part of that. They're going to want to open more in their community in an ancillary market, and, and, it, and it starts escalating very quickly. And I can tell you that's already happening right now. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we had somebody at Discovery Day that missed out on their tour, on, on their market um, because they were just a little bit late, you know. And so uh, I think we're uh, I think we're about to see escalated growth, probably up to 100 units in the next year or so. I think that's very reasonable to think. So here's, where, here's the stage that we're at right now. This is going to be the question and answer time. So we will go as long as you have questions. These calls are recorded. We host them on our YouTube channel. We let people go back and listen to them as much as they would like. And we, David and I can go on and on and keep going on, but we like to make sure that we can be here to answer uh, any questions. 
So you'll be you'll be triggered on how to uh, answer how to ask. Uh, you know, where you can vir basically virtually raise your hand to ask a question. So I'm going to unmute David again. All right. So David's unmuted. If you have any questions, this would be your time. So I think it's like star six or on your computer. It tells you. Star six. You got it. Yeah, star six. And it'll, it virtually raises your hand. And then that allows me to unmute you. And you can ask whatever questions you want. And feel free to ask a question, even if you heard it and you want to get clarity on it. Feel free to be skeptical. The more skepticism you have to this, the better our relationship is going to be in the future as we move forward. So please dive in with any other questions. If we have a question here. All right, here we go, unmute. There we go, all right. You're unmuted, do you yeah. have a question? Yes, this is a Gorilla. I was wanting to ask, how do I get my own franchise started up or get the information contacted? Yeah, so when you inquired, you probably got an email, might have went in your junk file, or. but what I would say is feel free to email me um, or you can text me. Um, I'll give you my cell phone number. That is 763-516-3578. You can feel free to text me, and I'll make sure I get you all that information. Did you hear the last four digits? Yeah, three, five, seven, eight. Yeah, three, five, seven, eight. Sounds like you're in a wind tunnel. Oh, seven, eight. Okay. Yeah, and here I actually have your phone number too on my in my system, so I will uh, I will make sure that I uh, also text you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. All right, you have a question? Yeah, uh, I actually met with the team yesterday at Pearland. I was really impressed uh, with the setup you guys have. Re really interested, but one one thing that I thought about after the fact was uh, what's sort of the uh, time investment um, from the franchisee, you know, during the first three to six months? I, I, I feel like, you know, after a while, this could eventually be run on sort of a at least semi-absentee basis, but, um, you, you know, just trying to juggle uh, the, the W-2 while setting this up, uh, just curious what, what you kind of see as an average time investment uh, over those first, you know, say, six months. Uh, David, I'm going to let you jump on that one. Yeah, sure. So, is this Chris? Yeah. Hey, man. Um, so, I think that's a really great question, Chris, and I know you want to keep your regular job until you kind of get to go and I would say that you need to probably be involved and try to be as much involved as possible, especially on your first unit. Uh, if you're going to go multi-unit, later on you might be able to, you know, kind of just hire a manager, get them trained up and, and, and monitor it afar. But that first unit, you need to understand what the, everybody's going through. I would take a little bit of time off, at least spend a few weeks in your arena, understanding how it works and, you know, you know where the light switches are, right? You got to you got to kind of know all the little details to understand what your your manager is going through. That's what I've been doing over the last few weeks. Is I I don't have a luxury of a ton of time, but I go and I spend a day there or an afternoon there. I go and you know hang out with Dylan while he's doing his tournament, and I talk to Jamie, which is our manager over there. So I have a lot of different small opportunities that I make the best of, so I can learn really about what the r operational rough points are. Uh, how I can help her uh, manage that, and but you know, I, you know, I, I have a, a, a bigger team, but I'm pretty involved in my my units that are open, and so I feel like you could definitely do this uh, part time. I would say in the very beginning, though, spend as much time as you possibly can um, getting involved and just understanding what your managers are going to go through. Yeah, does that okay. make sense? Makes sense. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Look forward to having you here in the Houston area. That's going to be great. Hi. Oh, you have a question? Danielle? Dang. You're unmuted. You still there? No, she can't hear me, but you're unmuted. Can you? No? Wait. All right. Well, we'll come back. Oh, right. I'm kidding. Can you hear me now? Oh, I got you. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. 
Love the double mute. <laughs> Thank you uh, for taking my question. So, yes, uh, I'm uh, taking a look in, uh, in the Central Florida market and uh, a lot of good conversations with you, Marty. Uh, but uh, this one's for David. I wanted to hear from you. What do you see as the biggest risk to this franchise in the short and the long term? Right? Obviously a little bit newer uh, and, uh, you know, not exactly a, a ton of time to, to uncover all of the skeletons, lots of good history and some of the other brands that I've heard, uh, but I am curious. What, what what do you see the biggest risk is and what are you guys doing to mitigate that? Risk here for us, in our, in our opinion, is going to be mostly on the operator side. So, you know, if you're going to be um, an owner-operator, uh, I think you have the highest potential of, of success because you're not re relying on anybody else to operate it, right? And you can know, you know, you can jump in there and you can work an extra 40 hours a week if you need to or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not saying you should, but I'm just saying like you have ultimate control that way. You know, if you have if you have a, a manager in your arena and they don't work out, that's a risk, right? Employees are always going to be a risk. Um, as far as like the systemic pieces of the business that's like a model. You know, we, we, I, I like to say we're doing something that's new, but it's not like we invented, you know, recurring revenue after school programs for kids, right? It, it, that's, that's a pretty well-known model, and we've built our system around that, that, that thing that already exists. We've given milestones that are not dissimilar to, say, uh, martial arts or something like that, so parents and kids both understand their path to performance. Uh, we have tournaments that are not different than any other sport. Um, you know, so it's not, while it is a new brand and it is definitely, we're definitely still kind of in our pioneering phase, I think. Um, I, I think we're emerging out of that um, to have a successfully proven model um, that resembles a lot of things that we already have. So the risks to me are the boots on the ground, um, lack of marketing would be one that like, uh, in the biggest way, I mean, this is not just for, for Valhalla, but this is across the board for all franchising. Uh, the biggest way franchisees fail is, is two parts. Um, uh, one is they don't follow the model. They try to, you know, the, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Founder, but they're selling fried chicken in the parking lot at a McDonald's. That kind of thing. It just it just isn't what they're about. Um, or two, they run out of capital, and so that is a very important. That latter one is a very important thing that we make sure with you that you have enough capital to invest in the company while it's building up to that profitability model. And so, it's not just a burn and turn. We're going to make sure from our side because it's never it's never a good thing when you have to sell it real quick or you or you have to God forbid shut something down just because you, did, you ran out of money. That doesn't make sense for us. Um, we're not having no problem selling these units, right, across the country. So we don't want to put somebody in a position to buy one when they can't be successful. So I think our diligence there tries to mitigate that particular one as much as possible. And in franchising in general, you know, a regular business, you open up a mom and pop, that's a 50% close rate. In franchising in general, a, a, a healthy franchise, you're going to see about a 5% close rate. So it's, it's 10 times better than a regular kind of go at it on your own. And the reason is because we know those levers to pull and the knobs to turn in order to make sure that you're successful on the front end of this equation, right? And, and, and uh, one part of that um, also is a knob. Do you want to talk about that? How we, we know what knobs to push, buttons to push. What it really is with that, one of them that's really important is franchisee to franchisee communication. And on top of that, how we share best practices. You know, being in Central Florida, you could have a great idea, you could beta test it, it could work out fantastic. And then how do we scale that? How do we spread the word about that, about something that's working and what franchisees want? We, we are have a culture of franchisee to franchisee to franchise order communication. We've already established and ready to go for, with our very first FAC, Franchise Advisory Council. So we're very franchisee focused on how we grow and really make Mulholland the strongest and best esports brand in the world. We can't do that without our franchisees. So a lot of people will ask, well, what are you looking for in a franchisee? And I say, number one, we need you to communicate with us. We need you to 
to work with us to make this brand great. We need your communication. We need your insights. We need your 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 success stories. We need to know where you tripped and fall, and and how we can avoid that uh, across their entire brand. And so a good example of that this week, and and I usually say my very first thing is I want people who can follow the plan, you know, and. And when you can't follow the plan because of whatever is in your local market, communicate with us. So I don't think we're saying the similar things. That happened this week. Somebody wanted to have round dusk instead of square dusk. And we, we communicated and said, hey, look, you're going to open almost 10 of these things. Why don't you go ahead and just open the first one the way that we kind of prescribed? And then you can give us that valuable, pers- that, that valuable insight if a round table would really do better. Or you might say, you know what, if I'd have built those round tables, we would be kind of messed up right now. So, like, sometimes it's just communicating, understanding that we did things for a purpose, and then coming back into the fold whenever you have more perspective. That was a really long answer there, Danielle, so sorry about that. <laughs> it was a wonderfully, uh, wonderfully executed answer. Thank you so much. And it, if it was legal to sell you a sea, uh, to send you a sea turtle when you become a franchisee, I just want you to know I would do it. <laughs> I, would do I don't even know what that means, but I'm sure it's a, you, you guys have a joke about a sea turtle. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she just yeah, no, well, kind of. But anyways, so well, I I want to just kind of wrap up today and just say thanks again for joining us. Now, if you're kind of curious of what the next steps are, or where do we go from here, or what happens, I gave you my cell phone number. You probably have me or somebody on my team that has sent you an email. Please send me a text message if you have a question. Seven six three. Five one six three five seven eight. I can get you the answer. I can get you the information. These calls are recorded. They're hosted on our YouTube channel. We're, ho- we're having an in-person discovery day on a Saturday. First time in seven years that we've done something on a Saturday. So we're having an in-person discovery day at our corporate office in Houston, Texas, um, August 19th. You want to come to that? We'd love to have you. Just message me and let's work out the details. We also host virtual discovery days. Which is, the, which is like drinking from a fire hose for about two hours of just tons of information coming your way. We personalize this process based on how you like to absorb and information and vet out businesses. We're not forcing you to do it our way. We're just asking you to make sure that you, you come forward, ask a lot of questions, be skeptical, communicate with us how you like to learn, how you like to go through this, and we will personalize it for you and with you. But the yeah. virtual discovery days and those in-person discovery days, those are exciting times to be in person and work together and, and uh, be able to create a connection and understanding of who we are and who you are uh, as one of, hopefully, one of our new franchisees. Anything you want to add, David, before we wrap up? I was just going to say that the fact that we do it on a Saturday after seven years of doing these is just one more example of how we're kind of always looking for the best mousetrap to, to solve a problem. You know, it's never like... We're a team that solves problems. We're a team that jumps in together. We're always a team that's going to give something a try and then and work it out and figure it out together. And so, like, we're, all, we're constantly thinking about new ways of doing stuff, but then we also listen to that feedback from, in this case, it was candidates, but in, 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 the, in the operations of our franchise, it's, it's certainly our franchisees. And we change things based on that feedback because uh, at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want the best mousetrap for you. To, you know, to, to, to do your business and, and build an amazing arena that you can be proud of. So I appreciate everybody's time today. I know that, you know, on a Friday afternoon, um, it's sometimes hard to squeeze this in before happy hour, but I uh, appreciate everybody jumping on the call and, and being a part of this and being as excited about it as we are. Um, the, the next steps are usually kind of scary for some folks. It's, it's about taking an adventure that you've never done before. And I think you got to have the right team. Uh, you got to hit your rag- wagon to the right team in order to do that uh, successfully. And I, I, I personally believe this is the best team that I've ever been a part of. So I hope you do. Well, I want to thank everybody again. Feel free to reach out anytime. Love to dive in with you and, and go into the details. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for taking the time today. All right. Thanks, Marty.